pleasure having you with us today. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, so you're 23, you graduated last year with a bachelor's degree in film and television from New York University. Uh, you're also a member of a student leadership and mentorship program uh, focused on education and giving back to the community. Uh, in 2020, you founded the Melakas Network, a platform built to connect actors, directors, and crews of color with the necessary opportunities, talent, and resources to tell culturally rich, diverse stories in film. So today we are uh, at day two of the conference, and it's about dreaming the future. So let's, let's dream together. Um, if you close your eyes and you allow yourself to dream about an ideal word, ideal but realistic, word what would it look like honestly the most ideal world would be a world where people not only listen to each other but show up for each other I think that something that we saw last year is we kind of had this double pandemic at the same time we had like the the sickness that was going around and like ruining families and keeping people away from each other but at the same time there were a lot of social issues that came up and were very strong and very visual um, last year with everything that happened. And so people were dealing with this um, pandemic and then they were also dealing with this new realization of all the terrible things that are happening in the world. Um, but at the same time, we saw a lot of people coming together and you know marching and like speaking out and coming together to try to put an end to these issues. Um, but then, you know, as things start opening up again, that kind of fades away. And like, we see less people marching, we see less people speaking up, and we see people kind of getting bored a little bit. So an ideal world would be where people come together, show up for each other and don't leave, you know, they just, they come up, they show up, they speak up, and then they stay there and they keep on doing these things and keep on pushing to continue to, you know, speak about the issues that are happening in not just their areas, but in the world and not letting it be a trend that just like comes a little bit and then goes away and then comes and goes away whenever people feel like speaking about things. So um, I hope that answers your question, but that would be my ideal mm -hmm. version of the world. Yeah, no, very much so. And and how, how do you think, I mean, I like you, I, I felt those double forces last year. I, I actually, that's also what gave me the idea to create the, the Sparks documentary series that I saw this crisis. I also saw the beautiful things that were created by this crisis at the individual and collective level. And at the same time, I saw also all these negative forces happening. How, how what do you think uh, we could do at, let's say at least at an individual level to to keep a, a bit more stability in this? Like if, if we see those positive things, and, and, and how, how could we make those positive um, elements more stable? Like, it's a hard I question, think, I know. But yeah. <laughs> I think understanding that learning never stops. I think a lot of people feel that when they get to a certain level, they either know everything or there's not room to know anything more than what they already know. So understanding that like if you meet a new person or if you're um, exposed to a new situation, it's okay if you don't know to say, I don't understand this thing, can you teach me? And then actually like actively trying to expand the way that you think and the way that you feel about certain topics. Um, that's I think that's number one honestly if everyone was able to do that we would have stability across the board because everyone would be putting in the effort to make make change happen mm, thank you um now now moving to maybe a more personal level could you share some of the challenges that you've overcome in your own life and and how overcoming those challenges gave you the, the ability to dream about this beautiful future that you mentioned just before Mm -hmm. I mean, well, the biggest thing is the Melacast Network. Um, I went to film school because I wanted to change the way that I saw people that look like me displayed on the TV screen. And when I got to film school, I realized that it wasn't just an issue like on the TV screen, it was an issue in the schools, like there just wasn't representation. I was usually the only black girl in my class. And if I wasn't, um, I was the only black person in my class. And so I just didn't see people that looked like me in a lot of situations that I was in. And so the, the Melacast network was me 
knowing that other people were having the same issue as me and trying to create a space where other people who are experiencing this problem and are um, not finding that sense of community and that safe space can come together and start creating art that displays them in a nice light instead of the ways that we've see, seen people of color displayed on the TV up until this point. When you wake up in, in the morning, what, what gives you hope? What gives you this beautiful smile that, that, we, that we see? And, and what makes you believe that this nice future that, that we all dream of is, is actually possible, despite all the challenges? I mean, things like this, things like, you know, bringing people together to just talk about their experiences and their stories and, you know, getting people in a space where they're able to listen to people from all over the world talk about um, the issues that they're facing and how they're overcoming it and how they're um, pushing forward. Because like in this program alone, we're meeting people from all over the world. Um, so things like that give me hope, knowing that other people care gives me hope because it's not just me in my room like thinking these things there's other people out there who also want to make a difference uh, so that's that gives me hope and then also um, just seeing the younger generation and how how like hungry they are and how energetic they are and how like unafraid they are to just talk <laughs> and um like I feel like when I was younger like there's a lot of things that I wouldn't say when I was with like older people because I was like oh like I can't say these things and I think that that's changing a lot so that gives me hope as well hmm. wonderful maybe to to finish because you did mention this younger generation um what would be your key mes message for for the younger generation do it <laughs> like literally just do it like if there's something that you want to do um, before you think of how would this not work, think of how can I make this work? I think a lot of people, they have an idea, they have a dream. Um, and the first thing they think is all of the cons, like all of the things that can go wrong, like all of the obstacles, like all the things that can prevent me from achieving this thing. Take that mindset out completely, just take it out um, and just try to think, okay, there's an obstacle in my way. How can I move around it? How can I change it instead of just waiting for it to clear the road? Um, I think that's the biggest piece of advice I can give for anyone. Because the second that I stopped thinking like that, so many more things that I wanted to do were possible. Um, well, I know I'm one person, right? And so like when I talk about like representation and like lack of diversity, I know that I myself am not going to change that overnight, but I also know that I can address it and I can add a solution to the issue. And so when I start things like Melacast or when I like even talk to you about like the issues that are happening and how I plan to like at least add a solution to those things, my goal is to make what I'm saying now becomes so normal that I no longer have to say it in a way that it's like this big thing or like this inspiring thing. Like my main goal is that five years down the line, this speech would kind of be irrelevant because people will watch it and they'll be sitting in a room with people that don't look like them at all and it'll be completely fine. And so my goal is for everything that I'm working on now to just become normal to the point where it's no longer a thing where people turn on the TV screen and if they see someone who is pink with like 17 arms, they're just like, oh yeah, they're playing this character and it's not a thing I think that that's the future that I'm trying to design and I know that I'm not going to do it myself but I'm creating a community of people who also want to do it so that it just becomes a cycle and that it just becomes the norm Yeah, um, so the film that I did for my my senior year, it was called To the Girl That Looks Like Me. And so um, that film came out of frustration of three years of not being able to find characters that look like me to, to act in my films. And so I decided that I was going to, I was going to make sure that I didn't compromise and I casted Black women and I put them in all the lead roles in my film. And so the first place I went was my church and I opened the casting front to non-actors. And so I went to my church, I went to my old school and I like, I gave them kind of first dibs because um, growing up, I didn't see Like, I didn't know that it was possible to become like an actor or director just because I didn't see other people like that. And so I wanted people like in my church, in my school to understand that like, 
even though they have dark skin, they can also be on the screen as the main character and not as a stereotypical role. And so that film is really special to me because it was the first time that I was able to just like put myself in a project completely and not compromise because of the lack of something um, in the industry. Uh-huh.